GA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the very mammoth AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas, and the introduction to the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D, as their guys will do battle. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line with the Minnesota Vikings. A first down throw for Prescott. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. They run with Ezekiel Elliott, last year's NFL rushing leader. Ezekiel Elliott going to take it the distance. Touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott, 54 yards. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Well, if they didn't get the wake-up call before the game, they got it right now. Two plays already in the end zone. I think of it in boxing terms because whether it's a big shot with your first one or a probing one, a little bit of a jab, the second one was the payoff. That was the big one that landed. One, two, end zone. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Vikings offense trots back out. And as they get this next possession going, CD, you had their game week six against Philly. Now they're at 4-2. What do you make of this team? We're finally seeing the Vikings we expected to see. They're putting it together on both sides of the ball because the defense has been pretty well a constant throughout the season. But now the offense has really joined them. It's not just Dalvin Cook running the football. Kirk Cousins can sting people downfield with Adam Thielen, with Stephon Diggs. They even got Kyle Rudolph involved in this game at tight end. So this is a team now that's playing with a lot of confidence, and they will be dangerous as the season rolls on. And Diggs was dangerous. What, did he have three touchdowns that game? Three touchdowns, and the best part was after the game in his post-game interview, after a monster game for him, he said, yeah, but I dropped two. So he's looking to improve. Throwing his cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. A gain of six there on first. Two plays, two catches. You have a feeling they're going to look for him early and often, and that's to be expected. you got a player of his caliber. Why not? And I think it's also a message from them to the defense that you're not going to dictate to us what we're going to do with one of our better players because so often you hear about defenses saying, we're going to take away what you do best. In this case, they're going to move him around, find proper matchups, and make sure they continue to funnel the ball to him. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And for Stefan Diggs, you know, people were wondering if his future in Minnesota might be a little uncertain, but he looked right at home in week six against the Eagles. 167 yards, three touchdowns in that ball game. He was huge. On play action, Cousins. Open man is stealing. It's complete. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. A first down for Minnesota. Cousins finding Thielen. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. 
Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game, loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Draw play, Cousins to Cook. He was brought down by Malik Collins. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Cousins gives way to Cook. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that will be incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant it a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. On now, the former Cowboy kicker, Dan Bailey. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. Cowboys taking the field again here offensively. And speaking of Dallas, we discussed their Week 6 loss to the Jets earlier. That's a head-scratcher. Even though it's on the road, nobody saw them losing that. And now, all of a sudden, they're at 3-3. Three and three. And when you look for positives... That's what you just hit on. They're three and three and still tied for first in their division with Philadelphia. And if you really want to make things go away, at least for a little while, beat Philadelphia, take over first place by yourself. Oh, by the way, they play Sunday night in Dallas, excuse me, in Arlington, Texas. That's a big ball game for them, a big ball game for Philly. And the bottom line is if you win your division, no matter what the record, you go to the playoffs. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Here's Elliott. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a first down on a gain of 10. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses, those exact type of runs. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And a nice run to get him past the original line of scrimmage. A gain of seven. It's second and eight now. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. On second down, Elliott. Anthony Harris on the tackle. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. It's caught. Cooper. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. 
That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. And this is caught. It's Cooper. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. Well, they have to be loving this start to the first quarter. Well, the way that they're going, I mean, you're about two touchdown drives already. They feel very confident and feel like they have all the answers in this game. They're one point away from going up 14 to nothing. Maybe they press the advantage and go for two. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. That one, 28 yards on the ground. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right, they're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. On second and 11 now, Cousins, and this would hold in by Rudolph. And he's gonna be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. And they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Check pass. Check pass. Now Cousins setting up the screen for Cook. And give him nine yards on the second yeah. down screen play. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Cousins now from the 50. That's caught by Treadwell. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 35. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. Pretty nice, aggressive run there before being brought down just inside of the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 
Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like right. about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. And he's able to find Diggs. A good pick up there, 21 yards. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. O-line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two there, and it's third down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Four down, four down. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. On plays like this, when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Cowboys' offense heads back onto the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. 
Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think the last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They have Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swaim, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. He can run for it, and he will. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. Back deep is a very dangerous Mike Hughes. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Cousins now. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Defensive end, Demarcus Lawrence applied the heat. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Yeah, and that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starting in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he could scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On second down, it's Elliott. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. He's going to get this to Austin complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. They'll roll him out right. He'll try and run it. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Right here, right here. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. 
Now he'll pull it down. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 36. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it in run time, and he picks up a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 36. Give him 18 on that one, and it's a Dallas first down. With Cole Beasley now in Buffalo, you think that might open up some more targets for Michael Gallup. Last year as a rookie, 33 catches for the Dallas Cowboys. From the red zone now, Prescott. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Michael Gallup, that's who he was looking for, but it's going to be second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Cowboys on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. He may try and run for this. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball. And right now, I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. Marr able to put this one through. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to of course, the door for Meyer was opened after a little bit of a surprise move. The Cowboys letting go of Dan Bailey last year. Yeah, Maher took over in the preseason. He's from Nebraska via the Canadian Football League where he kicked for four years. And I saw him personally make two game-winning field goals last season against Detroit and in Atlanta. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They start the drive with Cook. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. On second and inches, Cousins lets it fly for Thielen. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Just his second incompletion so far. He's 8 for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because you just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. 
I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. And he'll give it here to his running back. Fighting through, and he's got space. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Cousins the thrower. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. 10 yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Watch the screen. Cousins. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. Now Cousins. And this is going to be intercepted. It's the pro bowler, Byron Jones. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Following the interception, here's Prescott. And that's incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Back near his goal line, it's Prescott. Got an open man, it's Michael Gallup. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. A gain of 13, it's a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. First down, Prescott. Got his man there, complete to Gallup. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. They'll throw again. Prescott. Oh, he can't hang on. That was a dream chance for any D lineman to possibly get a pick. But instead, it falls down incomplete. Well, we got a second. Let's look ahead to week seven and what's on the slate. Things start out Thursday night. Kansas City at Denver, divisional battle. Suddenly an interesting game. Kansas City having lost their last two, and Denver now playing defense as we expected. But how about the NFL 100 game of the week? Oakland at Green Bay, a rematch of Super Bowl II. Also have New Orleans at Chicago, and Philly visiting Dallas on Sunday night. That is a huge one in the NFC East. Yeah, both teams 3-3. Three and three. The winner will have the lead in that division. Prescott now, 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. And again, it's Prescott. Completes it to Jason Witten. 
No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. To the air again, Prescott. He's going to find Gallup here complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just go. across the go. 25. And now out comes Minnesota. Time here for likely one play, then off to the locker room, and they're going to have some adjustments to make. They certainly will, and I think a lot of people are thinking to themselves, all right, take the knee, get out of here, regroup. But how will the head coach and his staff approach halftime? Will it be angry? Will it be clinical? Will they be calm? Will they just let it all out? Who knows? I'd love to be a fly on the wall for this one, though. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. It's caught, Smith. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, here's Cousins. Open man is Thielen, it's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Cousins now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. Now a run with Cook. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. 
And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's going to have another first this. down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 41-yard line. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Here's a quick throw to Thielen. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. 22 yards there, a first down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. They'll run with Cook. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Trying the power game with Ham. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. They go for just one here as it's up and good, and that will get them one closer. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They had that first half lead, but they have been shut down here in this third quarter, so time to retool a bit and probably need to tap into that emotional vein that gets them back to really playing hard and effectively. Because a lot of times we think it's just play calls and this isn't working and they're shutting them down. Sometimes and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Eric Kendricks able to get in there and drop him behind the line. You think back to last year, Dak Prescott was sacked 56 times, second most in the league behind Deshaun Watson of the Texans. Draw play, Elliott. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. If they can't come up with something here, they're looking at a quick three and out. Well, guess what? You get the ball in the hands of your best player to his favorite play and try and salvage something out of this drive. Now, of course, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're thinking the exact same thing. So they better provide him some help on this one. Flushed out right. He can run for it, and he will. 
Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. A limited running room as he'll get about three to the 21. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Leighton Vander Esch, third in the NFL in tackles as a rookie last year there on the stop. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. A well-hit ball there, 50 yards on the punt. Three on the return, and out will come the offense as they take over. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game, but why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be sack taken ready. down. Sack there for ready. the sack, Everson Griffin. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. They'll come up after the sack on a second and 12. Prescott down. His throw incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, third down here. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. He may try and run for this. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. The sack by Robert Quinn. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Third and long for Cousins. Demarcus Lawrence able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And that's his second sack of the game, but this player disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Here's Austin. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now, those extra plays or plays they haven't run that'll be effective and get them back moving again? They'll be looking for something here, anything to seize that momentum back. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Here's Prescott. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Third and short yardage, Prescott. This to Jarwin. And he's got this down to the 35. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And now he's going to use his legs. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Looked at me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up, running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. And he's going to be stopped here for no gain. And that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter of play. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys with the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. The Cowboys on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and eight. Prescott from the gun. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. I liked his effort there. He got it done on his own, but let's face it, he puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. The kick by Maher is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the four. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close.
After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. That one into the hands of Thielen complete. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Kirk Cousins last year started all 16 games but only led the Vikes to just one fourth quarter comeback like he's trying to do here. Cousins on target to Diggs. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 41-yard line. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Throwing Cousins. He finds his man, Johnson. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Baby, get him, boy! Get him, boy! That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Cousins again. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide-open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Throwing his Cousins, and that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And it's a big kick, but now we just, if they leave it short, you're like, whoa, what happened? And that's that's what we have here. Yeah, you're right. 20 years ago, we were saying run some more plays and get closer. Now we think they're definitely within range, and you're exactly right. When it comes up short, there has to be something that went wrong because they have plenty of leg. The first down carry by Elliott doesn't amount to much as he'll get forward for about a couple. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. <laughs> on first and 10, Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. 
Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. This is Elliott. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. So unable to get any yardage at all off of the screen there on third down. And ordinarily on third down, that's when you want to bring pressure. You get all your guys who want to get after the quarterback. But how about the patience they showed? Read the play, snuffed it out, and made a nice stop. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. Uh, Charles, all things considered, I guess that's not a critical miss at this stage, is it? No, but still everything helps when you're trying to finish off a ball game. And you're right, not critical in terms of the scoreboard and the team. But the guy with the golden foot, he knows he's only as good as his last kick. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Let's go, D. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And forget that 100-yard rushing game, at least for the moment, as he'll lose yardage here and fall back under the century mark for the game. Well, that's pretty symptomatic about how things have gone here. That play was just shut down right from the start. And not going to give him a lot of confidence to help turn things around. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 14. Cousins to throw it. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to make it fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Cousins to throw for it on fours. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Cousins, that's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing I can say pretty safely that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Now Cook. And he's able to work it here to the 8-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of 8. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. To throw, Cousins. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line. Second and goal. 
A uh, give to Cook out of the gun. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. This is third and goal now. 80,000 on their feet here in Arlington. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And it's caught. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin, fourth quarter. You're going. Fourth down, Cousins. And that is incomplete. They're turned on, away on fourth go. and goal. Go. And this Cowboy defense comes up with a goal line stand. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. You know, I was going to ask you if maybe they should surprise and pass the ball, but where they're at on the field, I think keep it on the ground, right? I like where you're going with this one because field position is going to determine these play calls. And backed up where they are, I don't even think about putting the ball in the air. I tell my running backs, grasp the football, and I tell my offensive line, don't allow any leaks so they get hit immediately when we hand it off. Yeah, they take this up near the 30 before he's taken down. That one good for 26 and a first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Another carry tonight for the workhorse alley. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. Well, they had a gain of 10 last time, now a gain of 20 here. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play.
Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Prescott to throw it. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. They'll run with Elliott. And down inside the 15 he goes. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's a pickup of 4, and it'll bring up second down. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Prescott, he goes down to a knee, and that should just about do it. So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.